Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Tonight, coming up, we're going to talk, we're going to have pocket checks, of course, but we're going to talk about uh, a new knife from Morgan Cones that's out, uh, Morgan Cones, that's out from Best Tech. He's an awesome custom knife maker uh, that I follow on Instagram. Very excited to see that uh, he has a knife coming out. A folder, we're going to do some state of the collection. I have a new Emerson, which I'm very excited to show off. And a uh, knife fight tonight, Wee versus Riot. I can't believe it took me this long to do Wee versus Riot. I wonder what people are going to say. I wonder how it's going to go down. I have my own feelings, my own opinions, but they might differ from yours. Mark, Mark Nelson, pleasure to have you here, sir. Pleasure to have you here. Let's let's just jump right into a pocket check. Hey, Michael Morgan, Ben, how you doing, buddy? We have Chris. How you doing, Blade Ogre? Great to have you here. How's the shoulder? It's getting better. It's getting better. I'm having, uh, obviously, it's the other one, but I don't want to move it. Getting a little bit more mobility uh, tonight. I, uh, by accident, reached up and it didn't pop out, so that was good. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Great to see you again, sir. Wugga Wugga 82. Sup, folks. How are you? Sup with you. Sup with you, Wugga Wugga. Um, so yeah, thank you, Michael, for asking tonight. I just got home from work. Actually, I had a late night at work. I was directing my last live show with my old boss. Now I'm, uh, you know, I got promoted and, and, uh, so I really, really loved working with her. We did a lot of great live shows tonight it was flawless and awesome. And I just got home and I'm like, <laughs> let's see cat stairs, early morning, dislocated shoulder. I think we might be related, Bob. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Ugh. How many people tell you you don't need that cat anymore? Everyone's telling, get rid of that cat. Uh, in any case, just got back and uh, oh, well, I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm ready to go. Hey, what's up, Joe? How you doing? I got a little something here uh, that Joe sent along to me. I'm going to show you later. Hey, what's up, Peter? And uh, hey, guys, what's up, guys? And possibly gal, not sure if she's with you. Also, Quack Fam, how's it going? Congratulations on the promotion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was a long time coming, and I'm very psyched. Uh, congrats on the promotion. Thanks again. Hey, hey, I, I'll show it again. Here's my promotion knife. Um, it's the uh, it's the antimatter from from Arcane Designs. I just had to have my double edged dagger. But today, I was carrying something else. She says hi. What's up? Hi, Christine. Today, I carried a brand new knife. Hey, Bob, your daughter did a great job the other day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think she did, too. And her grandparents think she did, too. And uh, uh, I, I, I do, too. And, and, and she's got this interest in interviewing and taking pictures and stuff. And uh, hey, Wolf, how's it going? And, uh, and it was very it was a proud moment to, uh, to have her interview me. Uh, the other day, she got on the phone with her grandparents. And uh, my, my parents went to Antarctica once in the, in the 90s, and uh, she's been learning about Antarctica in school, and so she interviewed them. She sat down, and my parents just thought it was like a casual conversation with the granddaughter, but she had a piece of paper, and she gave them the third degree. I was very proud. So today I was carrying a new knife. Uh, it is this... I, I, had, to, I had to send a, a DM to Edwin today just to, just to show him. Uh, to Calo PR because look at this sucker. This is okay. I'm gonna hold it still. This is the Emerson Tiger. Beautiful, beautiful knife. I got this uh, from a gentleman on Blade Forums. Brand new. I mean, it's brand new in box. And uh, as a matter of course, when I get new Emersons, I take the clip off and I sand down the G10 a little bit uh, under the clip because these, uh, I think, more than cold steel. Just shred your pockets. Actually, I mean, whatever. I'm not even going to make a contest out of it. Hey, Edwin, how's it going, sir? I just mentioned your name as I'm showing off this beautiful tiger. Uh, Edwin actually got back to me and said, that is the knife that Ernest Emerson... Hey, G-Man, it's good to have you. Lavender Pants, great to have you too. It's going well. This was the knife that he uh, he designed, and and uh, after he designed this and, and made it, he carried it for years. This was his EDC. And if you note... Uh, Ah, thanks, Ben. If you note, it's got the blade a blade similar, similar, I'll say, uh, to the CQC8. Um, it's got that that curved upswept um clip point. This, of course, is a broader blade, a little less curved, a little longer swedge. Hey, Rockstar, Rocksoft, good to have you here, sir. 
It's got that low slung blade, that big fat and uh, capacious wave. And then it's got the CQC 13 handle. All right, I'm not. I'm going to stop talking about this because I'm going to talk about it at greater length later. I have some knives I'd like to compare it to. Uh, but even though it's black, I can see it is smudged, and that's driving me nuts. Does that drive you nuts? So there we go. All right, second today. I was carrying three today. Second, and actually most used today, uh, was the microscopic Launch 11. Uh, this knife is so cute, so cool. It's like, it looks very serious, uh, but it's so diminutive. I, I like that. It's like a, uh, it's like a tough little miniature Doberman, you know, uh, lots of bark, lots of bite, but will it reach vital organs? Probably not. So, uh, I, I do, I do dig this knife. This is probably the most carried switchblade I have. Switchblade. I mean, automatic automatic. We don't want to call them switchblades because we don't want the heavens to fall down on us, do we? Okay, so I'm going to do that. So holding up my pants today. Hey, Monster Racing. Good to have you here, sir, as always. Jock, a pleasure. A pleasure to have you here joining us, sir. As always, I was just showing off the knife that was holding up my pants today. Uh, that's the. Uh, this was in the waistband today. The wonderful Civivi Asticus. The wonderful and wonderfully named Civivi Asticus. Ass to kiss sounds like ass to kiss. Uh, I know everyone in the universe has gotten that, but I just I just have to voice it at least once instead of just giggling every time I mention the name. Such a beautiful knife, nice big knife, and very thin and uh, quite capable. What's the steel on this? D2. Okay. Uh, Civivi, they understand. I mean, you know, we knife, Civivi, they know how to make a knife. And uh, they did a fantastic job with that beautifully hollow ground. 3.75 inch blade. So that's what I was carrying today. What were you carrying today? Let me know. Use use both of your hands because you're privileged in that way right now. I, I shouldn't even say that. I don't know who's got two hands out there and who doesn't. So, uh, you know, not my intention to, to offend. Uh, however, my, my daughter's been calling me lefty. And I think that's funny. Lefty to Marco. Jack uh, picked up Two long wanted knives today. The SOCOM Elite and Terrain 365 STS AT. STS, I want that so bad. SOCOM Elite, I carried mine uh, yesterday, actually, yesterday. And that's a knife that uh, uh, I keep in the drawer with my other Microtechs, which are all automatic, which don't get much carry time. Uh, so I kind of forget about it. Pulled it out, boom. Jared Neves had a lot of Civivis on his channel. Yeah, he does. Uh, but also, Jock, that STS, I'm dying for that. Not dying, but I'm really wanting that. And we corresponded uh, before, I guess, before it arrived. And you said you got the one in Teravantium, which I think is awesome. I really want to try that out. Den Dendritic Cobalt Alloy something. Uh, I'm going to no, I'm gonna say it like I know what it means. It's a Dendritic Cobalt Alloy, you know. Uh, Mark says, Rough Rider Giant Warncliffe. Ooh, what's that, Mark? I, I, it, I'm i unfamiliar with that, but I'm titillated by that. Giant Warncliffe. I love Warncliffe's and I like big knives. Had my 940-2 and my Otter Messer anchor knife, which is quickly becoming my favorite tra traditional. I love those anchor knives. I think they look really cool. I think you got that a couple of weeks back and 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 I was mistaking it for a different knife, uh, but I dig it. Penny Ripple, Rody, what color? Come on, Penny. Let me know what color it is because they added, what, three new colors. There's like a baby poop brown and a, I don't know, some sort of uh, gray, I think. Wugga Wugga says, Andre Thorburn, L51 and GEC Way North Lambsfoot. Woof. We have arist an aristocrat among us, people. That oh, Those Andre Thorburn knives. I don't I can recognize them immediately, uh, but I don't know much about them, but they are beautiful. I think it was Alex, maybe a year and a half ago, who introduced me to to that, to uh, that, I think. Ooh, the Fox Bante. That's a, uh, that's a really kind of specialized tactical knife with a beautiful look. I love, uh, it's got a, um, oh, it's got a cool tapering handle and a really good looking blade and a nice... Uh, an interestingly shaped opening hole. Is that right, Dave? I think I think I know what knife you're talking about. And uh, they went away. And that one, I think, has a glass breaker right next to the blade. Maybe right here. Something like that. 
A new bench made full size Adamus. Very nice, Peter. Uh, I, I liked the uh, videos of the mini. And, and then I just saw on someone's feed on Instagram, the mini next to a Sage 3. And they're almost the same size. And I was shocked. Um, therapy, uh, uh, Peter, I love the big Adamus. I think it's really cool. And, and the only one I ex have ever experienced was a friend of mine had one for a while. And I used to you know, play with it when I had the opportunity and it, but it was the automatic where you pull back the um, axis lock and the blade flies out. And that is an impressive, impressive knife. Jock, I got the clip point STS too. Clip point. I thought that that's the only one I've seen Jock. Uh, the one that looks like the shoot knife, but uh, what does it come in a drop point? Do tell large and cozy at work, Rockstead Ryo at home. So a wardrobe change after work. The Encosi is a, uh, is a, you know, great knife and stout hearted, great work knife. And then you come home and you slip into something a little more luxurious. I like that. I love looking at Rocksteads. I don't know if I'm responsible enough to own one though. I would probably drop it on uh, cinders and concrete. Like as soon as I had it in my head, it's so beautiful. Oh, oh. Uh, monster says Civivi Badlands Vagabond. So that is a non-locking clip point, right? It looks like the the one that came out earlier in the year, sorry. And, and the Victorinox Tinker. You always have that Victorinox Tinker, and that's cool. Uh, it's good to have one consistent knife on you all the time. For me, it's it's my little, uh, it's my little, uh, what's it called? Uh, Bastinelli Diagnostic that I keep behind my work ID. Always on me, and I'm, I'm always used to having it there. And as a matter of fact, it is perfect for grabbing with this hand because of the way it's oriented when I have my uh, work ID on. And I was like, wow, look at this. This is so cool. I can like optimize this sling. I could hide a knife in there. Uh, this knife is perfect for drawing that neck knife. And then I'm like, I would have to draw it and then switch hands. So it totally doesn't make sense. That was just me being ridiculous. Blade Ogre says, already did my pocket check way up there. Already did my pocket check way up there. What does that mean? I don't know what that means, Chris. Um, Ben says, carried the first TC Barlow I bought. Sheep's foot single blade with smooth white bone covers. Woo, and long pull. Do like the smooth white bone covers, I have to say. Um, Monster, let me know what you were just, wait, who, who was the last one? I'm sorry. Uh, Nick EDC, uh, Blade Ogre. Chris, please, let me know what you mean by that. I, I, because I'm feeling a little thick. I'm a little exhausted today. Uh, Nick EDC says, had the usual MKM Malgma. Mal Malga, uh, accompanied by the newly acquired AD15. Love the AD15. Uh, question, Nick, did you get the new one with the uh, the, the whole polymer um, grivery handle? I'm curious as to what people think of that. And the MKM Malga, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure most of you out there do. Is that the upswept curvy one that's relatively new? Unsure. I like your owl, by the way. Jim says, oh, 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 oh. Can't see comments from a while ago. Okay. Okay, I see. So so you already put in your, your EDC a while ago or your, your pocket check, and uh, I didn't see it. So had the, uh, okay. So I just, I wanted to let you guys know that there's there's going to be no Thursday Night Knives next week. Bob, my Oz Roosevelt finally came. It's a wonderful, it's as wonderful an EDC as people say. Probably going ahead and sell my haptic and drift now. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to talk. Well, I don't know. I should. I, I should. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to write that down. Uh, uh, Oz, you keep mentioning that, and I want to reach out to him. Jock says that Emerson Mini Sheepdog on me today. Such a great knife. Such a cool knife. I, that's my favorite of the small uh, Emersons. Actually, that that uh, that sax you had come through me was actually a really really nice mini. Emerson. Protec Striker Auto. Sweet. I love the Protex. I'm going to be talking about a Protec in a minute. Red Roadie. All right, cool. That seems appropriate for me. Like that, the Roadie is like a little piece of candy, right? I mean, it's a very capable and dangerous piece of candy that you don't want to eat, but um, they all, I mean, especially when you see a bunch of them together. Have you ever seen Keith Kevin Ken's pictures of all of his He's got this tremendous collection of Spydercos. Everyone that's ever, he's got all the Spydercos. I mean, everyone. 
and that will line them up colored and the roadies look so cool together and almost like a like a bowl of jelly beans got my giant mouse ace grand back nice from warranty yesterday hasn't left my pocket i also ordered the best tech togata that's right okay so we were corresponding today about that um, Joe got the Tagata. It's this is uh, the knife that we're going to be talking about in Knife Life News from Morgan Cones, um, who's just man. His he makes these amazing custom fixed blade knives, and each one um, I, I swear he blows through them. He makes them like that, and they're gorgeous um, and and really interesting. Uh, G Man says CQC thirteen, very nice, sir. Got mine with me. Never leave home without it. And the uh, uh, Steingraber Performance Knives Sasquatch. So that's a brand new knife, right, G-Man? He just dropped those and sent them out, right? Elvia and a little fixed custom dagger. Ooh. Oh, oh, that's the Emerson uh, dagger, right? That is a cool little knife. And, of course, the Elvia. I have my Elvia over there. I don't have to show everything every time you guys mention it. Uh, 5.25 uh, T10 carbon steel G10 bearings. $25. One of those knives make you afraid for American coast. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, they do because man, it's so good and it's so inexpensive. Hey, John, how's it going, sir? Hinder XM18 three and a half Fullard Spear with bronze tie hardware. DLT trading exclusive. I, I love the DLT trading exclusives. Um, I only have one, but they keep coming out with all these great hinderer exclusives. I have the the no choil worn cliff. What a wonderful knife! And then I dropped it right on the tip. Uh, thank you uh, for fixing that, Jared. Brad from Mild Mannered Reviews just sent us a CQC ten for a review. The tens are cool uh, and kind of a rare a rare bird. Am I right about that, Edwin? So excited, but it's a loner, so we are not allowed to beat the snot out of it. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty sure. These Emersons, you can beat the snot out of them. Um, but, yeah, you can't really do that with a loner. Um, I would say, um, guys, keep your eyes peeled on blade forms. I'm sure you have plenty of other places where you get your, sec uh, where you get your secondary market knives. But blade forums, um, you can get some good deals uh, on Emersons. Uh, you know, I got an old one from 2008 or nine or something like that for 125 bucks. Uh, several months back and it's awesome. And it's an S O K C F a, I think it's called uh, today. I had my skiff drifter. Ooh. Ooh. And a Meads gunstock slip joint. So he's from um, what South Africa, I think. And man, I, I follow him on Instagram. Those, his uh, slip joints are gorgeous. Number 73 Northfield. Gosh, I'm boring. What are you talking about? Patty, you have a Northfield. I don't even, I don't have a Northfield, and that's not boring. That is secure. You are securing yourself. You don't have to walk around like I do with something like this. Poncho 151, nice to have you here. Just got the new cutlery shop exclusive orange and black XHP Shaman. Ooh, nice. And had the 810 Contigo with me. That Contigo, I, I have mixed emotions about that knife. That knife taught me how awesome M4 steel is. I was also shocked at how great uh, for, I hate to put it this way, because, you know, Benchmade is a great company and they make great knives. But I know they went through a little spate of bad CQ or QC. And uh, um, that's when I had this knife. But this knife, my Contigo that I had, uh, was just amazing. I sold it because I never carried it. and uh, But I, I kind of regret it. I really did like that knife, even though it's got the double choil thing that, forces your hands into a, I don't know, but I still love that knife. Chicago 23, Spartan Aster. You know, I've been thinking about getting the Aster. That's the, uh, that's the new uh, high value, less George uh, knife that they put out. And I love his designs. And yeah, I've just been thinking of getting it just, just to have it and just, you know, look at it and appreciate kind of like the rest of these here. Uh, Mark says, evening everyone. Hey, Mark, great to have you here, sir. Ron, Kershaw Hot Wire. Ooh, that's the, yes, that's the um, Walmart exclusive. The Hot Wire is a great knife. The great knife, uh, a great knife. I actually got that for a gift for someone at work. Um, and I didn't know them that well, but they deserved something. 
And I was like, I'll give him a knife. And I got him that. <laughs> and I really dig that little hot wire. I learned about that from uh, uh, Birdshot, uh, their channel. They were, they were big on that. Always thought you were useless with a knife, Bob. Now I can see your arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always thought you were useless with a knife. Well, luckily, I still have my knife hand. <sighs> well, actually, they're both knife hands. Right, Dave? Both of them. Uh, James Culp. Hey, how you doing, James? I carried I carry two pocket knives with me every day. Good man. Uh, as they say, two is one and one is none. I have a Smith & Wesson Extreme Ops SWA24S pocket knife and a Frost Cutlery SAR tactical pocket knife. Cool. Wait, so what's the um, Smith & Wesson Extreme Ops? I know I've seen some of their knives and they have some really uh, unique designs in that line, I believe. Like like uh, really cool looking, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, well, unique, curvy, interesting, menacing knives. Hero Sticks. What's up, Hero? Great to have you here. Uh, uh, so, but let me know uh, what about that Smith & Wesson. I'm curious. Carrying my new uh, American Blade Works version 5 is breaking in really nice. Appreciate your review recently, Bob. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I just was playing with mine, and, and, and it's funny because uh, uh, Michael Martin... Told me it would break in. He's like, he's like, it's a little. Uh, I put, you know, he he blasted the blade, and he said it takes a while for the ball bearings to to sort of um, wear a, 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 a race in the actual medium blasting blasted part of the steel, and then it gets real smooth. And I was being impatient, and uh, so I loosened the pivot ever so slightly. It got it, it that immediately broke it in still no play what a great knife i mean michael martin is just doing something really special with american blade works i think kaiser pelican in black micarta excellent excellent i every time you guys say something i look around because uh i like uh the, the pelican is designed by uh k max rom and i think his designs are really cool and i love what he did with that uh kaiser knife hey alex great to have you here sir Alex, uh, from whom I got this amazing Emerson. I just have it out, and I just happened to mention, or just happened to see it there. No, I grabbed the green S35 AD. Yeah, okay, that's the one I have. And the Malga is basically a Swiss Army style knife in a few versions. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, they start with like maybe two tools and go up to like maybe seven tools or something like that. I would love an old CQC7. I would too. I would love an old CQC6. Hey, I'm not I'm not picky. Triple E EDC, great to have you here. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Aster is dirt cheap on Chicago cutlery right now. Oh, is it? All right. Note to self. I've never gotten anything from Chicago cutlery. Um, sorry. This is a little bit antisocial. Okay. Thank you for that information. It was also very cheap on Atlantic Knife. Cool. Well, I wanted to, I just wanted to mention no Thursday night knives next week. And, and, you know, actually I got the new artisan Arian in Burgundy, my carta tie arriving tomorrow. Very nice. Burgundy, my carta. Now you're singing my song. Uh, I was carrying a my carta Damascus blade HQ exclusive steel. Oh, metamorph. Nice. G5 metamorph front flipper. And it, and in such a beautiful configuration with my carta in Damascus. I was carrying my best tech ascot today. Oh, really? Uh, not a knife you hear much about. It's an underrated knife. I, I've never heard of it. Seems logical, um, but it seems logical. No, but uh, uh, ascot, that sounds cool. Uh, what happened to Bob's arm? I Really? <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, I'll tell you again. So I'm I'm walking through the park, and these guys, man, they just wouldn't leave me alone. Do you have the time first? And then it was, um, I can't remember what else they said. They can't remember it either because, man, you should see what they look like now. Tripped over the cat, fell down the stairs, dislocated my shoulder. Seems logical. Hello, everyone. I already know, and the ones I don't. See, that's what I love about this. That's what I love about this. People mixing and mingling. But I wanted to get to No Thursday Night Knives next week. You got it. You got that part. But I don't know. I've been doing a lot of thinking. The shoulder, this shoulder thing has, I don't know, uh, has got me thinking. And I've had a clearer head recently. And, um, you know, I don't know. I've been spending so much money. 
on knives that I don't know. I'm thinking I might take a break for a while. Uh, Jim and I were talking about it before the show, and um, I don't know. I, I mean, I I love it, and I love you guys and everything, but some, something's not. I feel like I've become a materialist, and I always really just wanted to not be a materialist. Wanted to avoid that, you know, and. So I think I'm going to take a little break, okay? Um, I hope you don't mind. I hope you're all here when I get back. Just kidding. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I can't see. I'm not good at pranking. But a couple of people out there are, and there are some awesome Knife World uh, pranks uh, that I love every year. I remember last year, maybe two years ago, Blade HQ did the uh, XXL Cold Steel um, uh, Navaja, you know, the big, uh, Espada with the, with the nine inch handle, but they made it a California legal knife with a, with a less than two inch blade. And I didn't realize what the date was. This happens all the time to me. I don't realize what the date is. And I'm like, huh? And I'm looking at it and I'm like, but I guess, you know, and, and eventually I brought myself around to it because I'm always trying to see people's point of view. And I'm like, I, I guess I could see why you'd want that. Cause still it's like having a really long knife. It's just that you can only penetrate this much. But if you're, if you, if you're just in the slashing game, you can reach, you know, I guess I could see that. And California is a weird place, right? Am I right? You know, they might want, who knows? I don't know what's going on in California. And then they come out with like, you know, April fools. I'm like, Oh, Oh, Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, you know, I know, of course. So that's, that happened to me again today and it happened to me twice. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to show them here be, uh, and to admit it because I think they were awesome. The first one was from knives ship free. And, uh, I saw this on knife news strap shoes. I saw them. I was like, what a great idea. Those are ugly though. I'd never wear them, but maybe they'll, you know, you know, maybe they'll change. Maybe it'll all be. And, uh, and here they are. And, and of course you read through the whole thing and it's funny as hell. And, and the left foot has what 600 grit and the right foot has some other grit. And, and, uh, so, you know, he, the article says you never have to be without your strap, you know, EDC items are small and carryable by nature, but your strap probably not. So, um, you know, buy these shoes. You'll always have it with them. The strap shoes are amazing. I ordered three pair. They're like a thousand bucks a piece. Uh, yeah, well, let me see. Uh, Jim, can you go back two comments? I missed. I think someone was talking about how their wife played a prank on them or something. Hero Sticks said, I got it. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm an yeah, April Fool's. I know. I know. Same thing. Same thing with me. I actually thought Bob was serious. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. It's It was all the it was all the furrowing of the brow and the. <laughs> The caught breaths, right? I, I've I've been watching I've been watching some TV. I think I know how to act. <laughs> Thanks, monster. Uh, I think Ben said that his wife pranked him, but I, I wasn't able to read it. But great, I think some people really have a mind for this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, so go to Knife News, go to Knife Ship Free, and read the whole write up of these. It's it's kind of hilarious because the whole way through, I'm like, this can't be right. My wife called me on April Fool's several years back and told me she was pregnant. <laughs> Got me real good. That's hilarious. That is so hardcore, man. She cuts to the quick. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so read that Knife Ship Free article. Hilarious. Seems logical. I like those strap shoes. Ugly but practical. Almost logical in a way. Well, who hasn't used their wallet or their belt to strap a knife? Or their jeans. I mean, a new pair of jeans will strap a knife of 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 thin edge and you know meager steel uh this old blade hey dave uh uh, uh get the strap shoes and the strap sling great combo <laughs> yeah right by the neck just be careful that's all just be careful you know it's the perfect perfect size and width for a strap yeah uh last night i was talking to dave and it was so funny because his first reaction to the sling was the first reaction I had. I was like, hmm, I wonder, like, like, what's the practical way of carrying a knife in a sling? And then I had this idea I could take um, a neck knife, like like the CRKT uh, uh, Quaken, I can't remember what it's called, but and, and wrap the string around my elbow and then have it come here so I could pull it and it would come out of its sheath and I'd have it. 
you know, why not? Neff Sergeant, why not a strop shirt? Why not? You know, um, or or a strop blazer. You know how you see blazers with the patches on the elbow? You could strop off your elbow. I use cardboard for makeshift straps. I've, I've done that too. Uh, cardboard with a, you don't even have to put anything on it. Uh, same thing with, same thing with leather, really. I mean, unless, unless, uh, I mean, you know, in a pinch, you don't have to put anything on it. Great thinking. I use my stubble face for a strop. That's, you know, yeah, I should do that too. Wolf Scout says, oh, Slicey says, I'm late. What's happening to the wing? What happened to the wing? Ah, oh, it's a shameful story of heroism and daring do. I was, I woke up early at five. I was resolved to start a new exercise regime. Didn't turn the light on, tripped on the cat, fell down the stairs, dislocated my shoulder, cried like a baby. That's how it went down. That's how it went down. Why not strop hats? Uh, you know, why not? If we're going to do strop slings, what's next? Strop Crocs. Madness. Okay. So the next one was actually a genuine disappointment when I found out it wasn't real because I actually thought, oh, that is really cool. And it came to us from Vero Engineering. Uh, Joseph Vero put this up on his Instagram today. A multi-tool in his uh, usual kind of format here. And it's a comb. It's a bottle opener. It's a uh, an oxygen. It's got an oxygen wrench. It's got an O that has the middle part of the O suspended by magic, it says. Um, just a, I thought it looked cool, right? Come up with a better stories for injuries, preferably with ninjas. Well, I was talking about walking through the park and getting jumped. And um, yeah, I know, I know. It is a bad story. It is a bad story and a very, very bad feline. Um, who, who among us doesn't think that this Vero joke is actually kind of cool? I do. I mean, you know, I'm willing to spend money on a knife that has a comb in it. Um, and, and on this one, it has a blade on the back. And of course, the it's always out. So uh, that's also part of the uh, joke. The O there, you can see the, the middle of the O is just hanging there by magic. Great. Man, I love it. I love it. I, I know that there are a lot more out there. These were the ones that jumped out at me um, today. I didn't have much time, unfortunately, to, in to look at Instagram and because that's a great uh, time killer for me when computers are doing their work at work, but I wasn't doing any of that today. The best part of the Vero is the sharpened back of the blade. Yep. Yep. And you know, it sits quite proud of that handle just so that, you know, it'll keep you on your toes. You know, why not? I partially dislocated my soldier once, shoulder once reaching in the back seat to give my daughter her pinky. Oh man, that sucks. I know like weird things have happened to me in my car. I, I know I've done something with my ribs. Uh, from kind of doing the same thing, trying to reach something in the back seat that's just a little bit too far. And there's that 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 thing here that you pull up and you put stuff in and it just uh, pushed too far. And now every time I laugh too hard, my rib <laughs> jabs something. Okay, there it is. The cat's out of the bag. Dave Everett and I had a great conversation last night, which you'll be hearing on Sunday. This old sword blade reviews uh, came onto the podcast and we had an awesome conversation about his his prolific martial arts background, which is really, really admirable. And then his really kick-ass collection of blades and swords. And uh, it was funny because uh, I asked him for a for a total, like in his collection, and I won't tell you what the number is, Just watch the show, but um, I was like, wow. I was like, that, you know, that's, it's not crazy. It's not Jimmy Slash, <laughs> Just I, uh, but uh but does that include all your swords too? He's like, oh, no, no, no. No swords and flicks play. He was just talking about the, the folder. So check out our uh, our conversation on Sunday. Dave is a fascinating guy. I know he's come on the show very briefly here on Thursday Night Knives a few times, but uh, but check in and see who he really is. Great guy. Uh, Maurice Clemens says, Chuck Norris injured your... Oh, of course. And I'm the only one who survived. I mean, because Chuck Norris tries to injure you and you're not walking away from it. I, I was able to, and all, all that happened was he dislocated my, my shoulder with some sort of a, a hammerlock hold or something like that. Oh my God. A hammerlock hold would hurt like hell right now. I don't think I could handle it. All right, guys, let's do some life knife news, uh, knife life news. Never get that right. 
Lavender Pants 86. I was surprised how much how many people took uh, took that Vero post seriously. Joseph Vero would really be jumping the shark if it was a real design. Kudos for him for spending time to mock it up for a joke. He said it took him like 20 minutes. I was like, damn. That's some that's some good engineering right there. But yeah, I wrote I wrote in his feed. I was like, "Oh, I'm kind of disappointed." <laughs> but yeah, that might be jumping the shark. That might be jumping the shark. We don't want any of our good friends to be jumping any sharks. Excuse me. Um, he just recently put up something on his page uh, for his XL, one of his XLs, and uh, I jumped on that. Well, I didn't jump on it. He said, "Let me know if you want to be considered to be thrown in." You know, like uh, it was um, a raffle to buy kind of thing. And oh man. I would love to to win that. I I would like to have a Vero engineering knife. All right, knife life news. First, Morgan Cones. Talk about knives I'd like to have. Dear God, man, this this one from Best Tech looks very cool. Now, Mar Morgan Cones um, is a custom fixed blade maker. He does have one folder before this, a really beautiful Bowie that's uh, just north of four inches in the blade, which you know I love, uh, and it has all of his, his aesthetic, very limited. And I think I think when you ordered it, he sent the order to the manufacturer, the manufacturer made it and sent it. It was like a, kind of a um, boutique kind of thing. Uh, but this is an actual uh, design that's licensed, the Togata. It's licensed to, best, licensed to Best Tech and they are making them now. And Joe, the Knife Whisperer, our good friend, uh, ordered one today and uh, beat us all to the punch. Um, it is a beautiful, very aggressive looking Tanto. It's got these gorgeous inlays. Uh, Jim, do we have that? Do we have pictures of that one? Oh, no, we don't. I sent you a link to a James brand knife. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna change this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, thank you. Yeah, he's a man of resources. He knows how to find things. I send Jim a run of show every time we do this with links and stuff. And, uh, I sent him the wrong link for this particular uh, story. So thanks for finding this, Jim. Much appreciated. Uh, look at this thing. It's a. It's got a little. Uh, it's. It's got a thumb stud. It's got a uh, nice fuller on both sides that you can use to open it. This is in Best Tech's premium line. Uh, as you can see, this one here has the uh, natural tan canvas micarta inlaid in that really interestingly shaped handle that looks very comfortable and again we have one of those double double finger swale things that i don't like so much but here it is very mm, understated i'm gonna say it looks more understated than uh both the contigo and the uh yojumbo to me this looks like just a bump in the road but uh i think it's a beautiful blade m390 um, I don't know. It's probably in the 225 range or something like that. And it kind of looks like a bolster lock when you look at the, uh, when you look at the lock bar there, I mean, there seems to be a cutout, but I don't know. I can't tell if the, if the micarta is stopping, stopping the blade, but, it, or uh, the, uh, lock, but anyway, look at that blade. It incorporates some Bowie with the, with the swedge and the, and the clip. Uh, the clip point there, or uh, the clip swedge on the top. And then it's got this really cool Tanto profile. And if you look, that wedge-like uh, four, four facet of the blade actually does have a secondary edge to it. So it is not coming to a zero edge. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just think this looks great. I just think it looks great. Joe, I can't wait to see yours, man. Um, yeah, look at that. And the clip, uh, Jim, Jim, can you scroll down just a touch so we can look at the beautiful clip? I really like the look of that clip. Uh, symmetrical, kind of looks like a gladius, like a Roman gladius uh, with that sort of symmetrical, well, gladius shape. Really nice looking knife. All right, very excited about that one. Uh, next is, ah, where is it? I didn't grab it. I have, have you ever heard of Baron Sons? I mean, I shouldn't say it that way, but you know, we all have heard of Baron Sons, but do any of us have, or do any of you have one? I have a Bally song from them. And, and I have to admit, I did go for the cheapest one I could buy. Um, but uh, Togata is a hefty three bills. Well, you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a, 
it's going to a good cause, right? It's going over to uh, help, uh, not, I shouldn't say help. I mean, they have to pay a designer too. Uh, I would pay no more than 300 for an Axon. I don't know what they go for. Probably more than that. Thanks for scrolling down, Jim. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool, cool clip, right? I was right to ask that, right? So Baron Sons Bear Ops release a Cali Legal Auto. Now, Baron Sons is a bit of a mystery to me. Um, I know that they're an American company, and I know most, if not all, of their stuff is produced overseas. Um, but in recent years, like I'd say the last two or three, they've been putting out some pretty good looking knives, I got to say, and some interesting um, autos and such. And these, uh, I think, are the most interesting that I've seen thus far. And they don't, uh, well, I shouldn't I shouldn't say that. I was going to say they don't look like Baron Sons knives, but I don't really know them well enough to know. Um, I have a few Baron Son Barlows. Okay, that's right. They make, they do slip joints. Uh, they do tactical folders. And they do autos. And here's one that's Cali Legal that that uh, they're just coming out with. And um, I just think it's cute as a button. And it's a button-fired automatic. Do you see that? Do you see what I did? I'm just literary, uh, just spontaneously. I just think it's awesome. Uh, I love the colors. Anodized black, purple, red, orange, teal, and dark teal. I don't know. I guess that's blue on the end. Uh, two different blade sha uh, um, shapes and sizes, it looks like to me. Hey, OCD. Great to have you here, sir. We're just taking a look at these Cali Legal. Uh, it is cute, right? I mean, we're looking at these Cali Legal autos here. Pivot gaps are huge. Pivot gaps are huge. Do you mean the gap between... What do, what do you mean? Pivot gaps. Um... Actually, when you look at the pivot, I like the little setup with the with the lozenge shape uh, um, d detention and the uh, and the button. I think that looks cool in the little little lock. So uh, Baron Son is known for um, their ballet songs, uh, their their uh, slip joints and tactical knives, but they're not known for their like tremendously awesome blade steel choices. They usually use 440C. Uh, yeah, I think they're, I, we, I was talking before about the roadie. It's the kind of the same effect when you see all the roadies and the different colors next to each other. Something makes you want to pick them up and throw them in your mouth, and then you stop. You know, they look like candy is what I'm getting at. Uh, what makes an auto Cali legal? Uh, it has to be under two inches, and these are like 1.86 or something like that. So just almost two inches on the blade. Um, I don't. I don't understand them. <laughs> I don't understand that law. Uh, I also don't understand the law I, of the state I live in. I'm not impugning California. Just their, their governor, man. Um, but this isn't a political show. Hero says colors are great. Hey, Jim, can you go back to the last one? I agree. Colors are great, uh, especially when they're anode into, into aluminum. I love aluminum by the way. Everyone, please remember to hit that like button, like comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. So you get so you get notice every time I put out a new video. Thank you, Monster. Monster is, is I, I know I mention this every week, but I think you need to go into PR, man. I think you need to go into public relations if you're not already, because you seem to, you seem to have it. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, it's better than Malo. Ours is under 1.5. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Under 1.5? How is that possible? I mean, is that even a, how do you have an under, look at this. This isn't even one point under 1.5 inches, this tiny little toothpick here. That's interesting. Uh, is that, what state is that? I, I know the outline and is that Massachusetts? Uh, triple, ED, triple E EDC says it's because you can't stab any, uh, someone with a fixed blade or a regular folder, but an auto over two inches can be used to stab and maim. I see. I see your logic. Yeah, that must be what they were thinking uh, when they when they made that. Totally, totally makes sense. Law. Yeah. So I I like the look of these bear. No autos in mass. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I hear what you're saying. My sister lives in the four one three. So okay, bear and sons, bear ops, like it. Candy like. Oh, what I was getting to was 14C28N is the blade steel on these. And 
And, and, and this is, I'm not being a snot or a steel snob when I say that this, but believe it or not for, for Baron son, uh, that's like a kind of an upgraded steel. And I like that. And I'm not being snarky. I think I, I like, first of all, that it's a guy and his son. I like that they're an American company. I like that they, uh, well, they have been using American steel. Uh, now they're using Swedish steel, but the point is I like that they're, uh, you know, reaching higher, reaching higher because, that's what it seems like they're tr they're they're making knives more now for knife people. Um, it seems like giving them some steel that knife people will want will help that effort. That's all I'm saying. And and so this these little happy, cheery little California legal autos. I hope they uh, I hope they do well for for Bear Ops. Bear Ops is the the part of Baron Sons that uh, puts their more tactical stuff out. So. Uh, when was it? It was either on a Thursday Night Knives or on a, a midweek supplemental. I said filth muck, which is a a, um, a quote from Fletch. And I said, hey, if anyone gets that, you know, what movie is that from? Um, I'll give you a T-shirt. And uh, a good friend of ours, well, he's a good friend now, uh, sent something, said it's Fletch. It reminds me of my grandfather and uh, Chevy Chase is the best. I'm like, you're right. And I sent him one of these. Don't take dull for an answer t-shirts. I sent him uh, the black one, but you can get them in white. If you go to the knife slash dull, or you can get them in black. If you go to the knife slash dull too. I love these designs. Jim designed these, uh, these particular t-shirts. And I just think they look cool. I love them. And then plus they have the, uh, the low, uh, the, the tagline. So of course I like that too. So check that out. And, uh, if I if I drop some movie quote, I've got some obscure ones. And Vic, my brother, if you're watching, you are ineligible because you and I know all the same movie quotes. I think um, I'll send you a T-shirt if you get it. Um, hmm, that begs me. Oh, that begs me to do one right now. I've got one right now, and it does have a little profanity in it. So uh, uh, there's one word that's a little colorful, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, block your ears um, if you don't want to hear it. And so, so here's the uh, here's the quote. And if you get it, or I should say, the first one to get it by emailing it in uh, to me uh, gets a T-shirt. Now, here's the thing, and there's no way for me to tell. There's no way for me to judge. But don't be a Mama Luke. Don't be a Gavone. Don't look it up on Google. Just if you got it, you got it. If you don't. Maybe you'll get the next one, but don't Google this quote. I think that would be really bad for him. Okay, so so here's the quote. In my jungle, you'd be just another asshole. Okay, what movie is that from? And who's the actor? Maybe my impression of the actor will be a hint. I don't, I don't think it was very good. Uh, I once worked uh, with a guy who did a perfect impression of this particular actor. And he called my brother, cause this is from a movie that my brother and I love and watched a trillion times when we were, when we were younger and he did an imitation. Hey Vic, what's up with your brother? I asked him for a cup of coffee. He's not bringing me a cup of coffee. Well, that's not very good. Uh, I can't really do him, but uh, if you can figure out what that quote is, let me know and you will get a don't take doll for an answer t-shirt. Just don't be a jerk and Google it. Thank you. I appreciate it. And sorry, didn't mean to call you a jerk. All right. So that being said, platoon, no, no, sir. <laughs> oh, did you like, did you like, do you know what it is? I have no idea. says Maurice Clemens. It is an awesome, when I finally say what it is, you all have to go watch it and watch it. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess maybe it's not that obscure, or maybe Lavender Pants is as awesome as me and my brother. Yes, Lavender Pants got it. In My Jungle, You'd Be Just Another Asshole is from Dogs of War, an amazing movie from 1980 starring Christopher Walken, where he plays a disaffected mercenary who, uh, who after coming back from a, a recon mission, yes, Christopher Walken, was it a good one? After coming back from a recon mission uh, uh, for a overthrowing an African company, he did a uh, country. Uh, he decides to go back 
and do the finish the job. And man, what a great movie. It's young Christopher Walken and uh, Tom Berenger is in it and a couple of other other people you might know. And it's just a cool mercenary movie. You know, they they do this whole this whole operation. And um, I, I love Christopher Walken, especially especially the young Christopher Walken. I don't know. I can't do him, but um, I, I, I've always aspired to. Uh, I just think he's cool. He's like he's wiry and weird and kind of edgy and um, think that, I don't know, he's going to just fly off the handle at any moment. I legit thought that was a De Niro. <laughs> De Niro. Are you talking to me? No, I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, I was going to say the deer hunter. Now that is a, that's a really good, really good uh, guess, you know, wrong, but like, that's a great uh, surmisation. <laughs> is that where they torture the guy with the glass shards in the mouth? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Wugga wugga. Great movie. I love Cl Well then Alex, you have to see this movie. It is so good. The only thing is, is I only have it in, in, in four by three, you know, like the old, old TV aspect ratio. I don't know if you can find it in uh, 16, nine. I'll have to look, uh, ever see the King of New York. Yeah. That is a great walking movie that was directed by that guy. Who was that guy? I can't remember. He did some crazy independent movies in the nineties. They all took place in New York. I think he did bad Lieutenant too. Uh, the director, there were just these really dark edgy, kind of hardcore movies and king of new york was was a good one what was that well it doesn't matter uh okay so I'm, I'm really glad someone got that it makes me happy hey ben how you doing man good man and we start talking about movies lots of good time oh yeah 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 uh have you ever seen that have you ever seen uh, uh dogs of war I've not seen Dogs of War, so that's on the list. Oh God! Everyone, who, who, everyone within the 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 sound of my voice, watch Dogs of War. There's a yeah. I, I might be pulling quotes in the future from it, but I won't be giving anything away because people will be like, "Oh, I guess it's Dogs of War." <laughs> but uh, yeah, great movie, great movie. Hey, uh, Ben, yes, let me show you something that I just got. Can I show you this? I just Please. got it. I just got it yesterday, and. Sand it off the handle and put it in my pocket this morning. An Emerson Tiger. Look at that thing. Is that I not love a, it. is that not a, just a, a, a is that not a cre not creepy? That's not the word. Is that not just a menacing but beautiful looking knife? I just love this knife. And guys, I gotta tell you. All right, so I brought out. I know I know a, lo a lot of you might know this or might not care, but. These five Emersons that I have are all recent. This one I got from Slicey. Thank you, sir. It gave me a great deal on it. Um, these are all recent, manu recently manufactured Emersons. They all have the single detent, and they are all ridiculously sharp. I mean, ridiculously sharp. And they have the same, they use the same blade stock thickness as the older ones. This is a, what is it, 2013 CQC 13. And if you look at the relief edge, I'm going to try and do this one handed. If you look at the relief edge, it's relatively shallow, right? Oh, Alex, have a great night, man. Uh, uh, fall, asleep, fall asleep to the strains of dogs of war, sir. I'll talk to you soon. All right. So you see that it's a pretty shallow grind. And then look at this tiger. So it's the same uh, blade stock width. It's about the same height of the uh, primary grind. And then you look at that secondary grind and it's so much bigger than the other, which means it's, it's thinner behind the edge and it is unreal. I mean, unreal. I had a box. I got a box of Amazon when I got home tonight, uh, late from work. And I was like, Oh, cool. I don't even know what's in there. Maybe something cool is in there. I opened it up. It's cat food. I'm like, ah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'm still feeding her. Yes, yes, I'm still feeding her. And uh, I was just, but anyway, this thing just opened the box. It was like, I didn't even, I just waved it over it, and the box just <gasps> fell open. It was awesome. You have quite the Emerson collection now. I, I do. I have, uh, I think I have 11 or 10. I, I just, I, I have a, now I have a sell no Emerson's policy because I've gotten rid of a number of them and I've regretted it. So each new one that I get, is going to stay though each new one I get, I'm going to make sure is something that I really, really want. So Ben, what are you carrying today, sir? 
So I got the uh, that TC bar. We'll talk about that in a sec. Ooh, nice. Oh, that's the one you were just mentioning. Yeah. yeah. That's and gorgeous. Like, this is aged. You know, like that's something about this white bone. It changes color over time. Um, it kind of becomes more ivory, like more cream. Yeah. And it, yeah, it just gets better with age. Kiefer, thanks for coming, sir. That's beautiful. And I love that. Uh, I love the, uh, the blade with the, with the swedge and the long pole. God, I mean, that's just beautiful. That's a beautiful knife. It's um, got a, the back spring is real stout too. Like I've noticed since the newer run of TCs, they were a little weaker than I think some people would have liked. But these older ones are real snappy. I like, I gotta say, I, uh, I am a sucker for the real snappy and, 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 uh, and the, you know, I like the stiff string, uh, springs on most slip joints. Uh, though I have a, I have that big trapper from GEC and it's almost impossible to open, uh, which is kind of a, you know, kind of a buzzkill, but, but, uh, yeah, I do prefer that stiff spring. It feels like it's, it's gonna, it's gonna hold you, you better. Uh, Jim, there was a comment. Yes. The real question is why are all Emerson? Okay. So I asked him that when he was on the show and he was straightforward. He said aesthetics. He's like, that's, that's my presentation side. And, you know, so he does that for aesthetics, which, uh, maybe that's why he does they do fewer fully chisel ground blades uh you know like the cqc uh, seven or the peace arc or something like that um because with these you know it's double ground on both sides and then just a chisel edge it doesn't matter that chisel edge is so thin in essence it feels like uh you know like it's not a chisel edge um what year is that tc by the way edwin wants to know but uh, yeah 13. Uh, 13 okay but yeah it is all aesthetics but uh tactical elements uh the online purveyor has done exclusives uh with emerson to make uh cqc sevens with the chisel grind on the right side on the correct side for right-handed people and uh i've always been interested in getting one of those uh but i think they had a short run of them and they're gone daddy gone at this point uh, ben, so that one was a 2013, you're saying? Yeah, 2013. So when you look at a, at an older GEC um, and then you compare it, to, mm, compare it to something coming out today uh, uh, from them, what do you find the major differences to be? Do you think they're like kind of the same quality? Have they gone up in quality, down in quality, same? Like what do you say? You know, honestly, I think to their – you know, to, to complement them, their quality has remained really consistent, all things considered. They're doing over 30,000 knives a year now. They didn't used to do Whoa. that. Yeah. Yeah. So given that fact, you know, if you really nitpick it here and there, they misfire. But you don't hear about it much. And I think they take care of people when, when you find one. Um, I think what I've seen is some inconsistent spring tension. Mm-hmm. Even within one run, like those 85s that just came out, the micarta one I have is damn near nail breaker. Which one is the 85? The the crown lifter bullet engine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a cool looking one. I like that. Very cool. Yeah, and I just got, I'll show you in a minute. But um, so I, I collected the run. I got the micarta, I got the um, dead skunk acrylic, and then the cherry bone. Ooh. And the dead skunk and the cherry bone are perfect. But that micarta one, that spring's a problem, honestly, on mine. And I opened it. You can open it like, well, right about there and leave it overnight. You know, that's what guys were saying in the Facebook groups. Oh. And put some back pressure on that spring. Yeah. And I did it in that position. Then I did it in this position. And it probably put a good three days worth of fighting the spring. And it helped a little, but it's not perfect. Huh. Hey, uh, Jim, put up that. I love, by the way, I like that leaving it. Only knife guys are going to do that. You know, just leave it open just a little, just right. tease the spring. Uh, you want to massage it up. Uh, uh, Edwin says, Tactical Elements just announced a new Emerson exclusive happening soon for your information. So I'm wondering, Edwin, did, did they announce what the model is going to be? I, I, I'm i curious. I, I kind of hope it's another CQC7 uh, chisel ground for the right hand because um, I really like those and I don't have, I'm, I'm seven lists and um, yeah, really, really want to get one of those. I'm also I got carrying to... something new, Bob. What? 
What do you got? I bought my first fancy pen. Ooh. So who's this, this from? This is, and I never heard of the company, but I got it at ICCE, Nottingham Tactical. You ever hear of these guys? No, I haven't. Are they from England? No, he's from Mississippi. And he was such a cool dude, you know? And so it's like, it's titanium. It's got, he had all sorts of crazy ones. I just got the entry level one, you know? I'm not quite up to paying like three, 400 bucks for a pen yet. Not there. Right. Um, but his mechanism, he has a no lock, a single lock and a double lock. And this is a single lock. So when you depress it, that little, uh, what do we call it? A tit, the tit pops out and then you can press it and it'll unlock. Cool. And then he had a double lock where to, you know, if you carry it in your pocket or whatever, you had to press the button and then stick it down. Oh, to get it to open? To get it to, to like be pen, be closed pen, open pen. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. But I don't like it. carry a pen in my pocket. I keep it at my desk. So I figured the single lock was good. Edwin says, not yet, but they will put it in their Facebook group. By the way, Ben, uh, by the way, Ben, I love my Cherry Smoothbone GEC 85. No problem with the spring on that one. Yeah. Yeah, Matt. So uh, what kind of... Um, cartridge goes into that so this one takes a pilot um like a v7 and I, oh. i'm new to the pen game so i didn't really know left from right with cartridges but he had a bunch of them that take parkers and i know there's a lot of variety with those and the way he set them up is like the module up here you can unscrew this and switch from a double lock to a single lock which is pretty neat and they're right hand or left handed so because i'm a lefty the clip is out and then i can engage the lock so it was really thoughtful i thought so is the guy who made this uh is he a knife person also see he owns a machine shop and he designs so he makes knives and designs knives but his expertise is he has like a very high-end machine shop he mills parts for the government he turns his own like cannon bullets and stuff for like 37 millimeter guns and like Jeez. beyond the stuff i get to play with right um, oh wow that's that's amazing, man. Yeah, he said he like saw the mechanism like in a dream and he woke up and had to draw it out real fast. Well, I, so. I you know, the reason I ask is like a lot of the considerations, the double lock, the modular nature of it are kind of the sort of things that uh, knife people might consider. They kind of they, they kind of seem like considerations a knife person would uh, mention. Hang on one second. Uh, um, someone asked if I have a CQC8. I used to have an eight sold that and I used to have a um, a horseman and I and I sold it to a guy at work who loved it and who uh, whose mother's maiden name is Emerson. And so they he figures he's so I just, you know, I sold it to him. Uh, so I don't have the eight anymore. I would like to reacquire the eight. But I have found that the tiger looks like a broad bladed eight. It looks it looks kind of like an eight to me. Um, just in the handle of a 13. Love that. Um, check this out. So Joe, the knife whisperer sent this for me to check out and it is so damn cool. Look at this. So this is the ProTech SNG. This is a special run. I'm not exactly sure how it's, uh, designated. No, that's not a scratch. Don't worry, Joe. <laughs> um, so look at this. It's, it's, Obviously, it's an SNG, which is uh, the smaller of the two, you know, between the SNG and the SMF. But the real, the real story here is this incredible micarta. I mean, I just think that that is so cool, and it almost looks like a um, like a photographic veneer or something on there. And so I'm like turning it around. You look on the inside; it's it's micarta. It's just really. Um, Interesting micarta, kind of patriotic, also looks kind of biological or topographical or I don't know, map like or something. Um, what a great knife this thing is. And then look at this, it's got a mother of pearl button here. I love that thing. Yeah, I, 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 I love it too. That I love great. it too. And, and, uh, I, 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 I must admit, you know, uh, um, Joe made me a pretty, pretty decent offer or, uh, yeah, he, he offered me for it for a, a very decent price. And, and I don't know, I don't know. It is so beautiful though. I, I, I really, I really like this. And I'm a, I'm a big sucker for ProTech. I mean, when you're talking automatic, 
out the side. I mean, they really know what they're doing. This one somehow, I don't know how they do this, but this one fires out, kicks like a mule, and then so easily closes back up one-handed, one-fingered or whatever. Got the eight in my pocket right now. The eight horseman is one of my favorite Emersons, says Tim Simcoe. Yeah, what a, a you know, the way it feels in hand is incredible, especially for me, the full size eight. It, it feels incredible. Maurice says, wow. Yeah, here. Wow. It is just beautiful. The Oh, and the button too. Yeah. I mean, this is a classy knife. Classy. This is a really classy knife. I love this. Is that G Carta? Did G, did Don Hansen make that? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I haven't done any research on this. G Carta. No, I'm pretty sure this is just straight my Carta. If G you look Carta is a brand that this guy Don Hansen's making, and he's making these amazing, oh. strange, interesting my Carta variations. Oh, well, then maybe that's what this is. It's like almost too a, pretty to use. Yeah. He has a Mexican blanket, which is like super clever. You know, it looks like a Mexican, uh, what do you call those things you wear them? Yeah, yeah like a, like a, like a, like a poncho kind of. It right. Has the, but it's or, like or, uh, threads. It's not like a plastic poncho. It's like a woven. Right. right. What did we, we? I used to wear these things in high school. What were they called? A baja. Flop, mop tops or flat. What was it called? A baja or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, but it was. was it was like a. It was like a hoodie, but but it was but definitely a from, pocket. Yeah, yeah, from South America. Yeah, those things right. were those things were pretty cool actually. That's definitely G Carta says lavender yeah. pants. Okay, okay, G Carta. So this is. Uh, this is interesting. I gotta, I gotta look this guy up. G Carta. He was at ICCE. He'd make a great interview, I think. Honestly. Yeah. Um, I, what he's doing is just super cool. If you're into my Carta, you know you're gonna be enthusiastic about what Don Hansen's doing. Don Hansen. Um, yeah. I'm just writing this down. I'm not just looking down for no reason. Um, yeah, I've, I, I've, I'm also interested in talking to like I'd love to talk talk to Chad Nichols. I think it'd be cool to talk to him about the creation of the materials, just like it'd be cool to talk to this guy about the creation of the materials. Maurice says, I would not use it for anything. It would stay in the box. I know that that isn't, that is an issue. And actually taking it out of the house is an issue for me. Um, luckily I don't have run-ins with the law, but who knows? Maybe there's a sting operation happening. Greg right now. Hansen, excuse me. It's Greg Hansen. Greg Hansen. I don't know where I got done. It's late. <laughs> I think they're called American Ridgeback. What What are you talking about, uh, Greg? Uh, what's American Ridgeback? Curious. Uh, oh, it's Greg Hansen. Says okay, gotcha. Thank you, sir. Just a just a great great looking thing, man. Very very psyched about that. So I'm I'm happy to have it. Happy to. Uh, I'm not using it. Not you know. I'm just gonna make a video on it and uh and then and then together with joe we will decide its fate either <laughs> meaning either i buy it or i send it back to him but man it's it's very tempting just greg says only emerson only quote unquote emerson i have is my spider co dragonfly 2 oh because it's got the which is also illegal here in massachusetts because the blade can be drawn in the drawn in the locked position what oh i like your little that's cool it's like huh yeah what the hell is that that's a bunch of like oh god lily livered sap suckers who just want to control your life who have no idea what knives are that's all it is hey professor edc always a pleasure jim bob ladies and gents good evening everyone hope everyone is doing fine well we hope you're doing fine too professor edc and hope hope things have lightened up for you uh down down south a little bit i know uh, last time you were on the show you were talking about how things are still very restrictive uh, things in some states here are starting to open up a little bit or, or a lot of it, and uh, it's it's exciting. So hope hope things are good for you down there, Professor. Uh, Evolved EDC and Bushcraft says, check out their site, Bob. You're like me with Micarta. <laughs> and trust me, you'll be blown away with the Micarta G Carta is making. Oh, boy. Here mm -hmm. comes another rabbit hole to, to fall down. Thank you, Evolved. I will definitely, definitely check that out. So Ben, what else is new in your world, sir? Not much. Um, just had a great time at that ICCE show. It's my first knife show, and it will not be my last. Oh, I I'm sure anyone living in Mass needs to move it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so they got some tough laws in Massachusetts. 
Yeah, yeah. The Northeast is pretty tough, though. Vermont is, you know, lots of guns up in Vermont. Eggs and ham twenty two. Oh yeah, it's the Americana G Carta. That's what this is called. Awesome, mm. Americana G Carta. Americana G Carta. That sounded weird coming out, but yeah, look at that. That that's exactly what that should be called. God. And I think it's. Uh, I think ProTech is such a great company. I love. I love their playfulness because in a way that's that's playful playful meaning you know let's try this material let's try that material let's make a seven thousand dollar version of this thing with engraving and let's make a you know uh an entry level version of this thing i i just like the way they are and and i just i think they're cool people i think dave wattenberg is a cool person i think he runs that operation in a great way thank you joe i will i will talk to you about this i don't know I don't know. Oh, the drama. First world problems. I, I have them coming and going. Are you going to go after the number 38s that just dropped at all? The split back Whitler? Uh, no, I'm not. Actually, I have 138. It's a single bladed <laughs> Mr. G in Vermont. Yeah, but TRM is in Massachusetts. Oh, yeah, that's right. Maybe they can't sell their knives there. There, there are, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, companies in California that can't sell their knives there. Is that right? I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, the 38, I, I haven't even seen that one, but right now, um, you know, as I've mentioned my cycles, I'm cycling back into a, 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 a folder. To, I, I just came through a fixed blade thing and that was kind of an expensive, <laughs> expensive stage with those two Randalls. Uh, but, uh, I think I'm coming back to these kind of knives. And and the problem is now, Benny, what happens, this has happened numerous times over the past five to eight years, is that when I round my way back to slip joints and that's all I want to do. I mean, I've, sometimes I've gotten into slip joints and I've considered selling like the tactical stuff. And I, I've hold, held off kind of understanding that that's ridiculous. But when I come back around to my slip joint phase, all of those GECs that are coming out now, like the bullet end uh, cap lifter, for instance, that one, I, I, I kind of feel a grinding in the gut that I didn't get. Um, I'll, I'll feel like, oh God, now I got to hunt these down and pay ridiculous prices for them. Yeah, what I've been seeing is, so first of all, they're having a banner year. Like it's been one grand slam after another, as far as the greatest hits, you know? Yeah. Yeah, And the 38 they're doing, it's a split back Whittler, which is the most difficult pattern they construct. They haven't done one for, I think, I don't know, probably seven, eight years, if I'm guessing. So, and they look Did, pretty good. Describe to people, maybe even using that whiteboard behind you, what a split back Whittler. You know, if you give me a second, Whittler. I'll grab one. Okay. So Excellent. Give me a minute, I'll grab one. Eggs and Ham 22 says, ProTech is wow. one of those California companies that can't sell most of their autos to people there unless military or law enforcement. Yeah, 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 that's true. Okay, so in my state, uh, there uh, there was a company trying to set up in a very impoverished part, the most impoverished part of the state, uh, and they were going to be producing automatics, which they were only going to be selling out of state, and our, and our, and our, our governor uh, said no. He said no. And it was all about optics because he had just been caught in blackface. And so he didn't want to do anything that might be perceived as controversial. So so because he decided to go to a party in blackface, none of us in Virginia get to have automatics. Just Greg says, we can have lots of knives here. I can carry the five inch buck. Oh, oh OK. 119 down the street if I wanted to. We just have dumb quirky laws. Yeah, that's interesting. It, that's kind of the same here. You can legally uh, walk around with a, with a Bowie on your on your um, on your hips uh, if it's open, and you just can't have anything concealed. I and mean, that's me. It does not make sense. Um, however, I'm not going to fight the right to carry a Bowie. So, so here we have then long. Ooh, love that. So this is what a split back Whittler looks like. So, so these are the springs, this is, right? This is the spring. And then there's a liner in the middle that comes to a point. And then there's two springs. And when they come together, like there's a blade at this end and there's a blade at this end or two blades at this yeah. end. And so when the springs come together here, they drive the main blade. And in the case of the new split back Whittler, it's a Warncliffe. 
And so there's no half stop on this one and it pivots on against two springs, right? And then you have a coping and a pen here. And to construct, and it's on a serpentine pattern. So to construct this thing where you perfectly align two springs and a liner that basically terminates to nothing is a feat in slip joint construction. So for an aficionado, it's like the pattern to have if you want to experience the maker's most complicated work. Yeah, I, I was under the impression that it was it was one spring uh, that was split into two springs. I, but I, I think that this is a – now you're getting me excited about a split back Whittler, but uh, uh, I think I might have to hold off. Hey, uh, Jim, can you go back one comment? about the buck 119 and the 120 uh, uh no, no no the one after that sorry um but uh yes maurice uh i love the buck 119 and i have the 120 so uh maurice i'm i'm assuming you've seen the new ones that are coming out uh the buck uh the whole it's five of them the 119 the 120 and and several other fixed blade bucks and they're coming out in uh canvas micarta handles and um even the liner between the two halves of the of the finger guard is micarta, and then the blades are S thirty five VN, and you know they're they're way more expensive than the normal one nineteen. I have a one nineteen, I like that knife a lot, though I always found the handle a little bit wide. Um, but uh, those micarta and S thirty five VN versions just look gorgeous. They're on the cover of the most recent uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works uh, catalog. Split back Whittlers are my favorite pattern. I'm trying to get one as hard as I know how. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe, uh, I don't know, Benny, do you have any advice on best ways to get your hands on GECs that you're... Yeah, covering? so what I've seen is, okay, if you want to get them on the drop, you have to go through GEC's dealer list. You got to contact every single dealer. You got to ask to be on their list. Some of them, they just put you on like a regular subscribe list. Some of them are small dealers and they'll just email you. But that's step one. And you're competing with a lot of people for that, right? But that's, you got to do that if you want to try to catch one on a drop. Then if you can't catch them, which is understandable, what's going to happen next is you're going to pay a secondary market price. If it's a recent drop, don't go to eBay right away. Because they're going to be top dollar people fishing for how much the you know people will pay. You got to get into the Great Eastern Cutlery Club Facebook group. That is by far the best secondary marketplace that I've seen, uh, hands down. And I don't think it's a private group or anything. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see the split back. Um, I think. Yep, there it is. Man, look at that. You see what I'm talking about? The brass yeah. liner in the middle of the two springs. Yeah, and then and then the main blade rides on those two springs. Yeah, where the two springs converge. This so and this then, is. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, I was gonna say. So obviously, you're trying to pin that together. You've got a, an angle running through that thing. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. perfectly square. And then you have to have the three blades nestled together without scratching each other yeah. in that tight frame. Yeah. So it's. You can screw that knife up in a million ways. And this one, this is not the one that they're coming out with, is it? No, because no, you've got a coping and a pen blade. Uh, but do they, are they doing the humpback? You know, that when you do that humpback, it, it uh, you know, allows for more accommodation of a larger blade because, because the spring has to widen out to go around the pin. And instead of widening out inside the well of, uh, you know, the, the blade well, it comes out in the hump. Are they doing that on this new one? It's yeah, it's that serpentine shape. That's the traditional shape. So cool. And then the main blade falls in between the two secondary blades. And the last time they did it, it was a clip. And this time it's a worn cliff. Like the last time they called it the Grinling Whittler. Now oh, yeah, it's the English Whittler. So they have different they just introduced a new shield too. People are it's controversial. People talk about it. What is it? Um, it just looks like a crest, like a shield that would be for a crest uh -huh. line kind of semicircle underneath comes to a soft point, but it's blank. So if you wanted to engrave it or something, I suppose you could, but it's, 
It's like man. the bottle shield. Not everybody loved it. Yeah, the nerve of them to put in a shield like that. The nerve. How dare they? Right? <laughs> I love the Coke bottle shield. I like any of the unique shields. I think they're cool, man. I think I think people need to loosen up. <laughs> I agree. People get very uptight about this stuff. It's like realize that they're producing some of the most amazing cutlery anyone's ever seen. So cut them yeah, some slack. Yeah, cut you them know? some slack on their on their. Well, for not only that, but I mean they're they are in they are fully ensconced in the world of traditional you know knives so maybe it's fun for them to strike out and put a shield that's shaped like this with nothing in it you know or right. a coke bottle or a wrench or something like that i think that's cool people took a exception to the hot dog shield i remember I don't know why. It's like a classic basic shield. It's it's a good one. I, I think people are just nuts, man. And, and you know what? You got other problems in your life, but you can't do anything about them. Or maybe you can't even say anything about them. So this you can talk about. And this you can get enraged about. You know, so. Right. Yeah, if that's our biggest problem, we don't really have problems, do we? I know. I know. It's true. I'm hearing music in the background. Is that? It sounds live. Oh, oh no. You yeah. don't have to, So on the other side of my wall... Uh -huh. Is like an exercise studio. Oh, really? And like, she tries to play it as loud as humanly possible. So it's coming through the wall, and I got headphones on. <laughs> and if that's coming through to you, I don't know what else to do about it. So maybe go over there and act like a you know a Karen. As they say. <laughs> I think as a man, you're a Mark. And, right. and, I, and I'm only saying that because. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a show called Ridiculousness on MTV. It's the greatest show ever created. It's hosted by a professional, a former professional skateboarder, Rob Deerdeck, and they just show, you know, wipeout videos from YouTube. And, and I love the show. And uh, <laughs> he's the first person I ever heard anyone. He, he'll just say, hey, Karen, you know, uh, when it's a picture of a woman, you know, wiping out, he always would use the word Karen. And then whenever it's a guy, he uses Mark. And I just think it's hilarious. So I think you're a Mark. Yeah, I'll go over there and I be think Mark. that music is loud. Uh, Maurice says, right, yeah. do you have anything against United Cutlery Hibbins? No, I don't. Uh, I, I used to really lust after the um, the Bowie. Now, I'm not sure. If it, so this is the Gil Hibbin Bowie. It was made by United Cutlery. And it, it, was, it was big in the 90s, I guess. I would say it had a big recurve. It had a big uh, bird's beak pommel and nice guard. And uh, it was featured in um, natural born killers. Uh, I don't know if you remember the scene where he throws the knife that they've just killed a whole bunch of people on the bridge. He throws the knife at someone and you follow the knife as it flies through the air and then sticks into someone. Um, that was the Gil Hibben Bowie. I always love that knife. And uh, Gil Hibben was a, a practitioner of Kempo Karate. Uh, uh, Ed Parker's Kempo Karate, which is uh, the first martial art I, I took and took seriously, and I really liked it. And uh, to me, it's, it's a great art. Uh, and uh, he made, uh, Gil Hibben made a special Kempo knife that was really cool. Now, this Bowie here, you see, is sort of a civilianized version of the Bowie he made for the Expendables. In the Expendables, it was the same, pretty much the same profile. Uh, but the handle was ivory and had like a skull and a and something on it that Dolph Lundgren carried. I love. I think Gil Hibben is has designed some really cool stuff. Uh, I don't like the fantasy stuff. He's got a lot of goofy stuff with like two blades and you know that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I have nothing against United Cutlery, Gil Hibben. Gil I was, but I was going to ask you a question. So yeah, back in the nineties. You know, you used to like get catalogs, right? Like catalogs yeah. used to be a thing. And mm -hmm. the Sharper Image catalog yeah. is one we always <laughs> like to have. But there was a catalog that, you know, I came across at some point and I bought all that Gil Hibben stuff out of that thing. Uh -huh. And they had like lock picking kits and they had, oh, what was that catalog? Was called? it was it U.S. Cavalry? I don't know. It doesn't sound familiar. There was one called U.S. Cavalry that, that would come in. It. Oh, wait, wait, was this one with, was it black and white with drawings? Drawing. No, it was like all the stuff that you wanted to buy as a kid and you didn't even know was in one catalog. <laughs> so you got the catalog. 
I don't um, know, man. I, I, U.S. U.S. Cavalry, I think it was called, was one that would come that had all that stuff. It had, you know, mall ninja swords, and it had all sorts of knives and folders. But then, yeah, it had other stuff like grappling hooks and and cal trips and all sorts of crazy stuff that no kid needs to have, but every nice. kid wants. The knife Steven Seagal threw into the wall in Under Siege was a Gil Hibben pro thrower. Good eye, Oregon knife guy. I think I know which one you're talking about too. It was kind of kind of dagger-esque. I still have a good collection of United Hibben stuff from my teenage years. Man, I really wish I saved the stuff from my teenage years. Bud K, that's it. Bud K. I think is it Bud K, Ben? I want to say it was called something like the Cutting Edge or something like that, but the Cutting Cut Edge is a a different catalog. So you know what? It could just be a memory that's faded too. Yeah. You know? Cutlery, cutlery corner doesn't ring a bell, but I'm going to be looking these up because I want to try to find a cover. I need something to jog my memory. Yeah, I was getting all nostalgic about like what we're talking about our mall ninja knives, you know, our Hibben United cutleries. Well, uh, um, I, mm, uh, I think Morgan was saying that he had all of his. Oh, there it is. Morgan was saying he has all of his knives from uh, from the teenage years. I wish I didn't give. I gave mine away to my cousin, and who knows what he did with them. But you know, I had some big survival knives and stuff. I, I'm sorry, Jim. Can you bring back that picture? Uh, thank you. Uh, here's a gripe with this design for me, and it's purely aesthetic. That shield offends me no i'm just kidding it's not the shield it's the the main blade is too damn short and they did this with the uh with the congress the two blade or the three bladed congress that they made the two bladed they made the uh they made the main blade which is a warren cliff a good size i think to me that's a that's too small i know it's got it's got to be that size i'm sure to fit in the handle and because it's a complex thing and everything but do you see what i'm saying I do, and the Grinling Whittler did have a longer clip point blade. <clears throat> so I don't know if that's a historic nod, that short horn clip, you know, but it doesn't have to be that short. It could be the nature of having a straight edge. Maybe there's something in there that would obstruct that a um, that the upward sweep of a clip point avoids. Who knows? It, but would, it could come out of the handle because <clears throat> the handle's jogging away. And so if it clipped up, it might be proud. Mm -hmm. Although it's hard, mm -hmm. you know. This is beautiful. What kind of wood is that? That's blood wood. And the jig blood bone wood. one has that shield I was talking about. That shield, you know, I'm not sure. I'm sure people are complaining about this one too, but the one people are really <laughs> bitching about is the jig <laughs> bone one. That's nuts, man. Uh, I have blood wood sticks. Someone um, made me some blood wood collie sticks. That is some heavy, dense wood. I mean, yeesh. I'd hate to hit someone with that. What what am I hearing? <laughs> what are you getting? You're getting something cool, I can tell. Well, in a I few minutes. A what's that? I was able to track down a grail. So you want to see it? Yeah. No, right. no, I don't I have no interest in grails. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. So I got a collection of Grady Eastern Cutlery harness jacks. Harness Jacks have all. Yes. And Charlie Campania, who's the king of the TC Barlow and responsible for some of the other SFOs that Great Eastern Special Factory order, for those who don't know, um, he did a series of Harness Jacks. So there was, uh, like, off the top of my head, 10 or 11 of them over time, right? They started with Shat and Morgan. And then I think when he got to Harness Jack number four or five, he switched over to Great Eastern. And the, well, Shad Morgan via Queen. Okay. And that was back when Bill Howard, who owns Great Eastern Cutlery, ran the show at Queen. So I've been able to assemble most of the Harness Jacks over the years. And I finally got this one. Let me get it out. As you get it out, Cutlery Corner, that was the show, right? Where they had like, you could buy 98 <laughs> knives and uh, for for 13 bucks or whatever oh god that's that is something that all oh, what is that weirdness so this is an 85 right and they did a harness jack on the 85 and this was 2011 that all wait hold that all up close to the to the 
So that's got like, it's like a double fullered and, and both sides of it are sharp, right? Like, yeah, that it's, scooping. this, this side is not as sharp as this side. Yeah. Um, but if you like alls, you know, <laughs> the harness Jack collection is amazing because every single one is different on every pattern. The all is always unique. Um, so I've been, I have been able to even find one of these to try to shake someone down for it. You know, they just, wow, they're, they're just not available. And I finally got one. I was excited. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, it's beautiful. And I've never seen the business side of the all of the GEC all I, I'm fascinated with, with, with that thing. And I do like that big belly spear point of, as I've told you, spear points kind of leave me cold. They're very useful, and I, I have a 15 that's a single spear point, and I love it. But I'm not, I don't love how it looks. That I love how it looks with that big belly coming down. Yeah. So, so everyone, everyone's talking about cutlery corner. You, you just, you just touch something off in people. Uh, don't, don't, put, don't put that away yet. Uh, right here. The, um, you touch them. So now everyone's remembering cutlery corner, that show. And, and someone just said, I, I don't remember who, that it's, it was his ASMR. And, uh, my daughter just hit me to what that is ASMR, right? Those are those videos with that are just appealing to the senses, right? Like, yeah, like people ch chomping on pickles and stuff like that, you know, like, uh, uh some is gross. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds gross. Cutlery corner has a YouTube channel. Oh, that sounds fun. Yes. Now this is the one of that that I, he loves the fat spear too, just Greg. This is the iteration of this knife that I like the best that I've seen so far. Bob, that, get this one, dude. Just swing it and get this one. It's gonna be a classic. I promise you. Okay, well, I- Look at you. that, dude. <laughs> so so is the, these are gone. These are, these are long gone, right? So here's what I was saying before is, after they drop, people buy them who decide they don't want them. They just- impulse bottom and so if you go in that facebook group you'll get people selling them like 200 to 175 okay. and they dropped for you know some dealers were dropping them from let's say 105 to 160 some dealers are starting to raise their prices 160 gunstock jack is charging close to like he's upwards of 200 dollars now because he sees people turn around and flip them and he's like screw you guys. You know, I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. making money, you know, and I, I could see that it's America, right? Do, do what you got to do. And yeah, price of everything's going up. So no doubt. So anyway, what I witnessed these last couple drops is drop happens. You don't get it from the retailer. Stick around in those groups. Guys will start turning them loose for a 30 to $50 profit. Big freaking deal. Right. When these things, when those deals are gone, you're stuck with 400 bucks on eBay. Okay. So, you know, so, just, so it is, it's a timing game and it's a no, know where you're going kind of thing. Agreed. Yep. You okay. got it. Yeah. And I the, can see that. I, I have the 15 cap lifter with the, with the, um, with the sheep's foot and I, I really like it uh, a lot, but this thing. Hmm. So realize that they only did an 85 with a cap lifter for a blade forms knife and the year is escaping me. You know, blade forms has a traditional knife for them and every year they would, uh, purchase a forum knife from Great Eastern Cutlery and they would design it with the input mm -hmm. of everyone in the group. And the only 85 they ever did with a cap lifter was that Blade Forms knife. That Blade Forms knife would routinely trade for four to six hundred bucks oh, geez. Um, on the secondary market because it's just an 85 with a lifter. So and let me so ask they, Yeah. No, 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 no. Keep going. Uh, so when they finally decided to do one, it was like, 10 years since they ran an 85 with a lifter. So people were stoked for these, you know? Well, and that's why I say this year is like a major year for them. I, I'm just listening to you. Are, do you keep them all? I Yeah, do you keep them all in there? No, like, I uh, you store, store them. I so I do these rolls. I think I showed it to you several weeks ago, but I, I got I had to buy a new one. This is a problem of being a knife junkie. Yeah, right. No kidding. no kidding. So I highly recommend these. Now, you know, they hold 18 and a here. Let me open it up. Okay. Right. How do I cut this open? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have no idea. I don't have anything to cut it open with. 
So these are silicone impregnated. So with these carbon steel knives, right? Oh, okay. You know, you don't want them to rust. And I live yeah. in Arizona, so rust isn't a big deal. But if you live in like Florida, man, yeah. you know. So they have look. a desiccant built into them, basically. Yep. Nice. And so they're slotted, and you get 18 of them. And they make different sizes for longer knives, but these are perfect for slip joints. And then you, you know, put them in and once they get, you can roll them up for storage. Mm -hmm. And then there's two strings. You get that out. And then you just, you know, rope it and tie it. So you get oh, nice. 18, 18 knives in this little roll. So when you start to get a bunch of them, this is a convenient way. They just stack in your safe. Huh. That is convenient. I, you know, they're... So everyone's got their methods. Some people like, uh, you know, like like I have two big craftsman tools, tool chests, you know, the, the red kind you see uh, that most people put tools in. I have my knives in there. And when you open them up, open up the drawers or open up the top, which is a lid, everything's laid out and you can see them all. And, and, uh, and also, that, so that's one reason why um, I do that. You know, everyone's got their, their method. Um, and also I think, I hope, I hope, I hope that, uh, heaven forbid, someone was in my house uninvited, it would be hard to make off with them because they're, they're heavy and bulky. Um, like, like, like the Pelican cases. I love those Pelican cases. They are, I love the way everything is organized and, um, is, is, you know, in their own little slots. Uh, as, as I mentioned to Edwin earlier, they're like, um, they're like little cradles for your baby, you know, and, and you see the top part and you know what the knife is and everything. But I've always thought like, what if someone, what if someone grabbed it and ran off with it? It's just so portable, but you know, you could say that about anything, you know, what do you keep your pistol in? Probably something that someone could pick up, cut the cord and run off with. So I shouldn't be so paranoid about it, but I, I like this idea of having a knife roll that has the desiccant built in it for these 1095 knives because like you said in a humid environment half the year it's very humid here half you know half the year it could be an issue so yeah i like that you don't want to go look at those things after six months and they're all rusted like yeah, that's a nightmare exactly. there it is that's nice and i love bone jig bone and stuff uh especially that plum jig bone that they just did the black plum uh, I used two of the old wooden machine machinist toolboxes with the green felt liners bolted to the to some heavy bookshelves. That's a great idea. I like the softness. I like the softness of the felt. Hold that up. That's not jigged. No, that they call it person. cherry the natural smooth bone. Cherry yeah. natural smooth. So it's like contoured, like the ed, like the outside of a bone would be. Yeah. You know, I've heard people reference this as a used female sanitary. Oh, item. good Lord. Yeah, there's been all sorts of bitching about these. And guys are dying them so they don't look like this. Hey, but I have an idea. Make your own next time. Make your own cap <laughs> right. lifter 83. God, right. people, what's the matter with people? Yeah, call that a used. Ugh. It's <laughs> now just you gross. can't see it, can you? Yeah, it's gross and tasteless. <laughs> oh, and man. believe me, I like gross and tasteless sometimes. But, yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about a beautiful thing that people put their blood, sweat, and tears into, you know, and it, it really doesn't look like that. It just looks like a red bone covered knife. Right. Maybe, maybe they're just all, all, uh, they got their knickers in the twist about that controversial shield. <gasps> it's a bomb. Right. It's like, you finally got your 85 with a cap lifter that you've been lusting for, for a decade. And you're bitching about the shield and you're bitching about the bones. <laughs> the like, bone. Shut up. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. enjoy it. Cause they ain't going to come around for 10 more years, guys. Some people thrive on it. Some people need it. I know a few who need that kind of energy, you know? Oh, there's nothing wrong. Well, I'll make something wrong. You know, right. I have someone like that at work, but still like them. Uh, the excess amount of silica packs that I have in my knife case <laughs> would dehydrate fruit. That's hilarious. What do you do Poncho? Every time you get a knife, do you take the little desiccant out of the, out of the box and just kind of put it in your knife case? That's kind of a brilliant idea actually. Um, I always throw them away, um, uh, because I don't know, they, there's a, something about them that grosses me out. I don't know what it is, but it m make me grip my teeth. All right. So 
I may have revealed too much about my my character just there. But uh, so coming up, Ben, do you feel qualified to have a knife fight with me about we versus Riot? I could always wing it, but honestly, no. I've only handled – I've never even handled a knife from Wii. Okay. And I've seen the Riot knives, and they're amazing. And I don't know – I would just be like, Riot's better at the end. So if someone's handled – you know, if any of you guys have handled one of each, jump on. Bob's nice. He won't bite too hard. They've, <laughs> they've, all, they've all handled both, Benny. I think you're the only one left. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm a noob. You're a noob, oh, bro. Well, if no one hops on in 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 uh, a minute or two, it's gonna be you, and and I think you're gonna have to fight for we. See, this is the whole thing about debates. What is that? So they call that soup bone. Soup bone. And it's got like <laughs> the marrow groove in it. Oh wow! And you do not see many of these because they never produce them in big numbers we're like you know 15 or less and so if you've never seen one that's probably why um soup bone let me see if i can give it to you like that soup bone i love it let's see it's like a yeah and incidentally it looks like that'll help with grip not that you're too concerned about grip on with that knife it's not like you're horsing on anything with it but still you know that ridge down the middle is just another um tack uh, tactile indexer. Somebody told me they were poison when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I feared them. I still throw them away because I don't want my kids. God damn it. That's exactly here. I wasn't even going to say it, but that's exactly, I mean, to to the letter why I get rid of them. It's the same thing. Exact same thing. As a matter of fact, I remember my brother once um, pretending that he was reading something off of them. It's, don't feed the babies. And and ever since then, I would it, it, it left an impression. What was that last one, Jim? Yeah, someone was encouraging someone to jump on. Jump who's on, got Justin. the expertise. <laughs> yeah, someone jump on. Now, if, listen, if this younger generation will eat Tide Pods, they might just eat silicone. <laughs> <laughs> Tide Pods. You know, I, I was about to say, I was about to reveal what an old fart I am and say, what is it with these kids? But you know what? I work with some guys who are young. It's not everyone. It's not everyone of that generation. You know, it's just the, it's just the standouts. And you know what, you know, I think Ben, you, you and I are solidly in the gen, uh, gen X generation. And, uh, uh, uh we did a lot of stupid shit too. <laughs> no doubt. We just, no doubt. I just don't think we were as, as whiny as the woke. That's all I got to say. And I'm pretty sure that I don't have to worry about that on this show. I don't think this is a very woke crowd, uh, but, you know, God, there's an awful lot of whining and bitching and moaning. And they're probably the guys who are bitching and moaning about the shields on your knives. So. I think you're probably right. Yeah, I just it seems like the feelings okay. get hurt a lot more. And now there's people who want to hear it for some reason. Yeah, your feelings. Feelings are the most important thing now. Uh, OCD for EDC. Uh, go to, excuse me, go to the knifejunkie.com slash join. And uh Put a light on your face and let's go. Let's do it. I'll, I'll earphones. even let you choose. What's up? Earphones. Earphones. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Make sure you got some headphones. because Definitely. So that poster with all the guns to your, over your right shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, can you guys see that? I can't tell if you can see it or not. Oh yeah. Every, every it? time we go yeah. wide, we can see it. That That's Ass pretty cool. Assault weapons of the world. <laughs> Lovely. Next to all these really cute kids' drawings. I love that. Yep. My, that's my office for you. I got a wall full of like, you know, elementary school drawings, and there's a large cache of weapons in, as well. What? Oh, really? And in your yep. office? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I have a, yep. I have a, my safe here. I try not to keep a lot of that stuff at home. I can understand that. I can understand that. Okay, so uh, we got OCD for EDC coming on in a minute. Gauntlet thrown. Whoosh, face slapped. We're going to do it. Oh, no cameras. Hold hey, on. Okay. Can you can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, loud and clear. Can you uh, hear me? Camera front. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, giving yeah. me way too many camera options. Yeah. I, too I, much. I, I got, I got see a, your head. Uh, what the hell is going on we, here? Yeah. We see you. Yeah. Just yeah. Hold on, just one second. I got. There we go. That's what's going on. My case was covering up the. Oh, it's pointing at the ceiling. Yeah, just tilt it down so we can see your face. 
I, yeah, that's that's about as far as I can go there. I'm just um, gonna have to get a little closer. So what's going on tonight, boys? All righty, so well, you know, you know what's going on, and we've gotten to this, uh, gotten to this knife fight, and your name is it's Justin. On. It's your name on, is, dude. Yeah, is it, your yeah, name is Justin. Name is Justin. Okay, yes, cool. Sir. I wanted, yeah. I wanted to make sure. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? It's funny. There are a lot of Justins uh, who watch the show. I, I, well, I think, I think there are three right now that I can think of, and and you're one of them. Well, I'm the coolest one by a long oh, okay. shot. So, <laughs> oh, that's. Uh, yeah, Justin so for those that don't man. know, I've, I've got a uh, YouTube channel as well called OCD for EDC, and I've been traveling for the last two weeks for work, so this is actually my last night in a hotel. Uh, I'll be flying home tomorrow, right, so uh, looking forward to that, but yeah, decided to come on and show you how a man knife fights, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, so uh, I will let you choose. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on. And and Ben is in the right place here because he will be the judge. Okay, perfect. Well, you know, he and and the rest of the viewing public. Um, gotcha. So we versus Riyadh. I, I, I'll give you the option of selecting who, who does what. Um, I'll take we. You'll take we. Oh. That's right. Great. Thanks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, since we is listed first, I'll let you go first. Okay. And so, and, the, and, the nice... and, so and so you get a minute and a half and my watch is uh -huh. right here. Uh -huh. A minute and a half to, to prove your point. And, yep. uh, and then I come on and try and prove mine. Okay. And just so I'm clear here, I'm, I'm trying to establish that we is a better manufacturer. It, yeah. It's the superior, superior knife maker. Yeah. Shit. This is going to be simple. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Stand All right. by. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Awesome channel for those who have, okay. So monster saying OCD for EDC is an awesome channel for those who haven't checked it out. So definitely go check it out. Yeah, Thank awesome. you, monster. I appreciate hey, it. All right. In three, two, one, go. All right. I don't even know why this has to be said, but I'm just going to clarify this for you guys. Uh, we knife manufacturing company has a shithole name. Like we is a stupid name. And I fully agree with that. Um, I don't know where it came from, but let me tell you when it comes to the products that they make, uh, they're just dominating the, the Asian market. And you got, you know, trash players out there like CKF and Riot and these other guys that are going to talk shit and act like that they make better quality products. But the reality is, is that we has got it sewn up on pretty much every level of the knife game. Uh, they have the 30 to $50 range with Civibi uh, and the new brand. I don't even remember what the new brand is. Um, yeah, I forgot what it's star, called. Star, but anyway, something on Amazon. But then they have all the Wii uh, stuff, and they do all the fancy OEM work just like Riot does. So they've got all the bases covered. They offer way better uh, product offering, a lot more designs. They come out with more stuff more regularly, and so Wii is definitely a better, uh, better manufacturer. All right. Excellent, excellent argument. Excellent okay. argument. And and I'm going to start my argument um, with a steel man argument. And I'm going to say that you're right about a lot of things. We is an excellent manufacturer. We uh, cut. We has has covered the bases. Has has made their work, their beautiful work, available to people who cannot afford their premium stuff, their premium lines. I really respect mm -hmm. that. And their Civivi line uh, is outstanding, uh, especially when you consider what it costs. Um, uh -huh. However, uh, Riyadh, uh, however, we and, and, and all of their subsidiaries present uh, uh, an issue. They come out with too much stuff. To me, it's option paralysis, and a lot of their things start to look a lot alike. Uh -huh. So I, I, I don't see the value in that. What I do see the value in is really, well, hold on, hold on. really hold on, focusing. Really do you see the value in a four hundred? Oh, oh, wait, 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 hang on, hang. Tank? Wait, wait, wait. No, that's not how this works. <laughs> okay, I, okay. How how I see the value <laughs> is uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, what I find value in is that Riot focuses on their high end, on uh -huh. high end OEM and high end in house designs. So where we is mm. great is great in the, in the way they spread spread the love. Uh -huh. uh, I think they spread it too far, too wide. Riot 
focuses on fewer models, fewer OEM projects, and, and they do it better because they're more focused on the work. They're more focused on the high-end stuff. And so that's where all their energy goes. Um, and it, it's, it's very obvious when you hold a knife made by them that it is, um, that it's a superior build. Now, I might say, okay, I think I've gone past my minute and a half. All right. So well, I'm going to show you ahead, but I was, I was willing to let you keep going. I <laughs> agree that Riyadh does make good, uh, you know, fine stuff and they have some really cool designs. I would question a little bit about their awesome in-house designs. I mean, they've had a couple decent ones, but yeah. like Riyadh Jack 2.0. That's a stretch, man. It's yeah, a, I, agree. I'm I not, agree. I'm not disputing the quality of the product, but the design, it's a little out there. Yeah, it's um, it's more it's more like a proof of concept knife. Hey, it's right. great to have you, Skywarp. Good to see you, sir. It's good seeing you. Uh, Monster Racer says, Riot makes some awesome knives, but we has more knives that I really like and want. The Mini Buster, for example. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, so where do you... I'm sorry, who was about to speak? Well, I was just going to say that we... You know, it, when they do play around in that three hundred, three to four hundred dollar range, uh, they do every bit as good a work as Riyadh. And I'm not, you know, I'm just being honest about that. Yeah, I've yeah. handled some of their stuff that is, you know, I would, I, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. I would say that they're on a level playing field. Um, but I would like to see Riyadh come out with some stuff that's in the, you know, hundred to two hundred dollar range instead of everything being three plus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice for the, for the, for the pocketbook. Not that I carry a pocketbook, but it'd be nice for the wallet. Uh, I, yeah, I just think it would, it would be cool to see some stuff from some of those designers that was more affordable. Yeah. You know, there's certain designers that, you know, uh, sharp by design, uh, yeah. Ryan, for example, yeah. you know, there's a ton of people out there that would love to get their hands on one of his knives, whether it's a Riot made or a custom, yeah. They're just never going to spend that kind of money on a knife. Yeah. So it would be cool to take one of his designs and, you know, make it offered in some more budget materials. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, especially with that, that uh, example in particular. Hey, uh, oh, you're Hinderer Collector of 41 now. Because yeah. I, saw, I saw a comment you left recently and it was Hinderer Collector. And I was like, I that's wonder, true. I wonder if that's you. So, I had uh, to do. I did it. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's like no. I did a quick rebrand because I collect only but hinder knives. That's and it. That's what I've been doing, and I've been doing my own thing. And this is a battlefield pickup, by the way. That's and gorgeous. What do you mean a battlefield pickup? What does that mean? This is like the line. This is like their series. It's. It looks like it's oh. battlefield. It's got a lot of scratches. And oh, man. Dude. Oh, shit. I thought he found it in a fight or something. Yes. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> you know, for remember. firearms, too. Battlefield pickup. Like, yeah. it's all distressed. Like, you know, in yeah. the middle of the war, you grab that sucker off the ground kind of thing. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Two things. That is so damn cool. I love it. And it's also like buying pre-ripped jeans. I knew you. I knew it was coming. I knew the dad, the dad vibes were coming in here. How are you gonna buy pre-ripped jeans? What the, the dad hell is wrong with you? That is funny. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Now, of course, uh, of of course, Skywarp. What's your? Or, I'm sorry, Hinder Collector. What's your name? My my real name or yeah, your first name. If you don't Brant. Mind. It's B R A N T. Brant. Okay. Uh, I just didn't want to call you Hinder Collector Forty One every Dude, time. Oh, so. <laughs> So, Brant, um, uh, of all of the different, um, uh, what do you call it, um, looks, uh, not looks, not colorways, but uh, all of the different um, types Finishes. of, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was full screen while I'm like, all the different kinds <laughs> of hinderer types that you can get, you get the battlefield pickup, you can get the uh, the the, uh, the the legacy or the, the, the vintage with the... Um, yeah. You know what I mean? They have a number of different looks. They, Which is your favorite of have, all those looks? Well, what, what they have is the Vintage, the Signature Series, and the Battlefield Pickup. Okay. Um, Battlefield Pickup is more like it's more over overbuilt. And then pretty much um, the Signature Series is like half custom and half mid-tech. And it's made back when he did that way back in the day. Numb one says, I turn my own knives into battlefield blades. <laughs> he must also be a dad. 
<laughs> so I do so want to show you, say, Bob. Oh, oh, that quote. Well, hold, 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 I'm sorry. Hold that thought, Justin. Yeah, put that back up, if you would, please. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. I, I really, Southern, really Southern like Edge exclusive. They're Bowie shapes, man. I love Hinderer Bowies. Oh, I got mine right here. This is my this is my Hinderer Bowie XM24, and it's just a, I, it's just I'm a so nice jelly. nice look. Did you call this <laughs> jelly? I'm so jelly because I love the oh, XM24. Jealous, I, <laughs> I thought you called this jelly. Like that's what the kids are saying now. That is so jelly, old bro. School. Here's Ooh. an old school one for you. Nice. Yeah, when it comes to Bowie's and to the Warney, uh, the Hinderer's blade shapes are pretty pretty bitching. I agree. And I also agree, sure. I, I would also uh, posit that yeah. uh, the 24s are the perfect expression of both of those blades in particular. Definitely. Uh, because they have just a little room, you know, to stretch it all out. And it's like the difference between um, sort of a truncated small sports car and one with a big, long, and you know, engine or hood or whatever right like an e-type jack yes yes oh yeah yes. with a v12 and the and yeah the, the yeah. really long drawn out hood but or, or the old ferrari that, daytona like a vibrant has got the full look going on here with the with the mullet matching the hinderer logo on the hat and the shirt <laughs> killing it <laughs> just hair blowing in the wind like oh yeah man it's pretty I, lit. <laughs> I love it i love it do you have the sticker on your car i used to have a hinderer sticker on my car and it i have of, well i don't have a off. car but i have them on my my, my computer i have it on everywhere oh, i can't All even believe you asked that question bob <laughs> 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 the, the man came on with a shirt a hat yeah, and started yeah. hinderer I mean, I, I, you know what here's the thing you know I, he's I, got I have stickers. all of my shirts with me so i mean I quick changed to this one because I love Battlefield Pickup. Cool. Right on. I, I love hey. it, man. I, I love Hinderer knives. Uh, my, my, um, the, I have the no sell Emerson policy. It's the same with my Hinderers. I'll never get, I have four of them. I sold, uh, I, I sold one uh, a while ago to, to fund this purchase. And then that's it. I'm, I'm never going to sell another Hinderer. Uh, Bob won because um he just did. <laughs> well, thank you, Maurice. What thank the you. hell, Maurice? <laughs> professor well, EDC professor. says, Bob. Let me just say this, Bob. You want to know something? I have 24 yeah. hinderers. 24 Ooh. hinderers. Game is like, strong. I am a huge. I have every single, pretty much every single one from two non-flippers. Like, mm, pretty mm, much. Mm, mm. And those are a small batch by Rick Hinder. He made them back in 2019. Oh, wow. So those were, he made them himself. No, he didn't make them. It's just that uh, he, there's a small batch. Like when they come out, they, they have to be in small batches depending on what you're doing. Well, you know what I've been thinking recently? I've, I've been thinking, even though I don't like carrying three inch knives that much, I would love to have an XM three inch um just because I don't know, there's something about them. I, I just think they're very appealing, especially in the no flipper. Justin, what was that blade I just saw peek up? So in my work travels this week, oh, um, yeah. I went out to Benchmade a couple days ago with uh, with uh, Zach from Zach Stuff. If you guys oh, are nice. familiar with that channel, and uh, JB from uh, Big Red EDC. Nice. The three of us went down to Benchmade, and I picked up this uh, Crooked River. Which they had this they had this really awesome case there, which I I'd been into the Benchmade factory store a couple of times and actually did a tour there like a year ago. And I maybe I just never asked about the case or something. I don't know. But either way, they have a case there. You know, they have the the custom uh builder on their website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh so for knives that people uh build through that custom order page. And then for whatever reason the deal feel, falls through, they didn't pay for it or oh, whatever. Brilliant. So this is an S90V full size Crooked River with blacked out hardware. So it's got some cool, you know, custom things to it. That What's you the uh, backspacer look otherwise. like? Uh, backspacer is black nice. G10. <laughs> it's not orange. Good. Deep carry clip. Uh, and then this is. I wanted to get the auto fact. Oh yeah. But they were out. I really like they that. Were, they were all gone. Fact. Yeah, so the fact cool. is really cool for sure. It reminds me of the Maximus, the hinderer Maximus, a little bit. The fact you see things through a hinderer lens, though, sir, would you not say? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, here's the thing, but, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be truthful. I've been thinking about maybe trying to get Rick Kinder on your show. I'm actually oh. trying to get him on. Dude, here. if you, I, I've left so many messages. I've talked to so many people there. Or not so many people. I've spoken to a couple to. of people that he will just not return my calls. But, you know, all in I good time. Try. I'll, I'll try my best because I'm trying to get it's, him to do me with me and I'm thinking about it. So Yeah, man. I mean, if, if you could help out with that, uh, you know, I would, I, th- I would appreciate that more than you would know. Hey, gents, we've gone two hours and it's getting <laughs> late on the East Coast here. And, and I'm, 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 uh, I'm pulling into the station, as they say. Um, <laughs> But I'm really glad to see all three of you, and I would love to see you again. Justin, it was great to have you on tonight, having finally yeah. met you. And and look at Ben over there trying to trying to tempt me back with the, with his other with his other. Yeah, see, he. Info. This is what I was this listening what, to, to Ben this whole time, and he obviously is is really deep into the the slip joint deal and the yeah. GEC game. Yeah, and I think some of them are absolutely beautiful. Uh-huh. I am happy that I am not uh, all caught up into that world because it does not seem like a fun place to be. People bitching about <laughs> shields and colors and frig- oh, they're, I just, it's because it's, they're, they're frustrated because they can't get their hands on one. You know, it's well, it's, and I get that eighty-five percent good. You know, it's you got your 10, 15 percent of people who make the most noise, and you know, we we talk about that, but honestly, it's a really good community. I gotta admit it. It has become a lot less fun to collect them because all the, there's only thirty thousand a year, and there's like two hundred thousand people who want them. Yeah, you Man, know. But, I'm, a but, of, I'm a member of the Spider Co Collector Club, and so I get all you, the, the the new Spider Co's and whatnot. Uh, and so I get a little bit of that. Like, so there's some serious Spider Co fanboys out there that are hardcore. Uh, but the GEC thing, man, it seems to be another level up from that. People are pretty, pretty, pretty hard into that. Yeah, it's, they're dedicated. Uh, Monster just said, uh, safe travels to you, OCD. Uh, someone else just said, uh, first time seeing your face. Chris, thank oh. you. Thank you, everybody. Um, Sorry, I'm not better looking. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bob and Jim and everyone that came. Awesome. Hey, hey, we don't come here for our looks. We come here to look at knives, and, and you brought some cool ones, so that's all that matters. And right. you brought the fight. Thank you for the debate. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It's always fun. I, I sometimes have to debate myself, and that's always kind of a drag, uh, though my chances of winning are 100%, which I do like. You always um, got to look at the upside. Yeah. No, it was, yeah, it was exactly. good times, though. And uh, for sure, we'll, we'll have to do it again. I'll, I'll, I'll come with... If you give me a little notice, I'll have some some prepared words. <laughs> okay. Oh, geez. No, then I will give you no notice. All right. right. Before we wrap, I got to see these two knives. You guys are dangling in front of me like a, like a, like garter belted legs. Let's see. Same one. I just, you know, a little something for the screen. We all like oh, candy. Look at that. What kind of wood is that? Ebony wood from 2011. Just gorgeous. It'll be a while before you see another one. <laughs> see what I mean? Like these guys, see, he's talking about woods from certain years and, yep. and then have a great night. Monster. Monster. Thank you. And thank you for on helping me remember that. <laughs> hey, real quick. You mentioned yep. a mullet. Let me tell you something. Fort Worth, Texas. I saw no less than 20 mullets over the course of a weekend. They are back. Oh yeah. They're, oh, back. Yeah. they're back oh, big. Yeah. A, a friend of mine used to be a barber and a year ago they were coming back, especially a, a lot of young kids, you know, hockey players sure. have, have never stopped wearing mullets, but they're uh, a lot of hockey players are, Oh, he's, he, that's not that's a mullet. Not a mullet. He blows some wind on there, and he looks he looks that's, like the hinderer. Dude, that's just a glorious, sure. glorious young head of hair that I, <laughs> I wouldn't just mind bad. having some right, right yeah, there. Those were the <laughs> days, Bob. <laughs> a glorious mane right there. <laughs> that was worth it. That's it's so funny because uh, uh, that's that's what I do when I look I look at like um, you know you know how women will be like. Uh, look at another woman and oh, I didn't that. me. I look at I look at a uh, uh, what's his name. Um, Who's the actor? Leonardo DiCaprio. Every time I see him, I'm like, he's such a great actor. Man, that hair. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I've gone too far. All right. So, everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, uh, Ben, uh, Justin, and Brent. Brant. Not Brent. Brant. Brant. Okay. Thank you guys for coming. And thank you, everybody, for watching who's still here. I really appreciate it. And uh, 
well, next week we won't be here. We will be here the following week, despite my my lame April Fool's prank. And uh, well, just remember uh, to listen to the interview podcast. We got another great one coming up Sunday. We got Dave, this old sword, and then uh, and then we'll see who else might be in the offing. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, guys. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying don't take dull for an answer.